Welcome back, my name is Benji. Today I want to welcome you to a new mini-series, Le Tour de France Femme 2022 on Pro Cycling Manager 2021 using the 2022 Women's Database. In total, the race is eight stages, unlike the men's Tour de France, starting with a sprint on the Champs-Élysées. After that, another day for the sprinters. Stage three seems to point at the punchers or hilly sprinters though, while stage four has gravel sections, so that's pretty cool. Stage five is another day for the sprinters. Stage six likely as well, although in real life this will probably not be a flat sprint. I'd argue stage six in Pro Cycling Manager also for the sprinters. In real life, it could go to an attacker on the Côte de Bourges towards the end. But then the mountains arrive on stage seven, arguably the Queen stage in my eyes, Col du Petit Ballon first of all, then Plazzo Wassel, and towards the end the Grand Ballon. If they don't broadcast this race from the bottom of the Petit Ballon in real life, I'm going to be so disappointed because I do expect people to launch very early on this stage. Nonetheless, on Pro Cycling Manager, I do expect the Peloton to wait until the final climb. And on day 8, the Tour de France Femme finishes on the Planche de Belfia as the final climb, after also going over the Ballon d'Alsace. Hopefully, the stage finishes with us in the yellow jersey. I'll be riding with Team SD Works. Why? We do not have the best climber, we do not have the best sprinter, so I feel like that's a good option to be outsider on literally every terrain. One thing we do have is a strong team, but in 2022, Trek also got a stronger team, FDG as well, so it's gonna be intriguing either way. Despite the complete absence of time trial kilometers, Royster is in our squad, 79 flat, that can come in very handy. Bowman Passio as one of our GC leaders, 80 mountain, also Demi Volring, 79 mountain, but 80 hill. She's better on the cobble, so I'm curious how much that stage with the sandy sections is going to matter. Lotte Kopecki, the sprinter of our squad, 79 sprint, we've got Majerus as lead out, 76 sprint, 79 flat, Fisher Black, domestique for the mountains with 74 mountain, and finally Catablanca Vaj, let's be honest, she's awesome, so we had to get her in. Competition wise, the big guns are here, Von Vleuten, Nordesgaard, Longo Borghini, Balsamo, Dagnen, Utterpludwig, Cavalli, Muzic, Lebecki, no Vos, surprisingly, Lorena Wibbers, Labu, all here, Amanda Spratt, Nivia Doma, Brennauer, legendary rider, Mieke Kröger. Now when it comes to this first sprint stage, we all know who is the best sprinter in the world when it comes to the women's peloton, Lorena Wibbers. We're gonna try and beat her with Kopecky. 7.5k to go, diving into the tunnel, we've got Royzer at the front, they four women train at the front with Kopecky in last wheel. Kataplanka Vash takes over, Majerus in the wheel, we've got Majerus with 2k to go, launching her sprint right now. Kopecky in the wheel, losing a bit of energy in the wheel, so oh my god, I got blocked by my own teammate. Let's try and sprint anyway. Come on, Kopecky, last minute. Come on, Kopecky. Northgard, Kopecky. Kopecky's gonna win. We've got no finish line. I don't know where the finish line is, but we won. So that's a win. Let's hope they put up the finish line by the time we do the real Tour de France Femme in real life. There we go. Lotte Kopecky in the yellow jersey after day one of the Tour de France Femme on the Champs-Élysées. What a beautiful side. Day two, once again a sprint stage. Wibbers once again favorite. Let's try and win once again with Lotte Kopecky. There it is. The first ever yellow jersey in the Tour de France Femme among a Belgian's shoulders. <laughs> My dream. <laughs> Three and a half kilometers to go, Vash at the front, we've got Majerus once again in the wheel, Kopecky sitting nicely in third. Let's try and launch before the corner with Vash, there we go. Majerus in the wheel, don't get blocked by Georgie, let's try and launch with Majerus right now. Kopecky, perfect lead out right now, let's go, Kopecky, Kopecky, but now we're on the right, I think we are looking good. Balsamo tries to come around, Balsamo tries to come around, is it a one-two for the team? I think it is, yes, 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 two in a row for Kopecky. There we are. I actually do like this kid a lot, the one of his D-Wags, but there's a lot of kids that look alike. It looks a lot like the uh, human-powered health kit. After these two sprint stages, we are leading the points classification with 21 points over Norsgaard. Onto a stage for the puncher, starting in Banche, finishing in Epernay. Demi Vollering and Molan Passio are two leaders for this one, unless we can get someone like Kopecky over those hills, then we can still try and sprint for it. Honestly, with Kopecky with 77 hill on the day, I do believe that I can get over these hills towards the end, to be honest, so... I'm going to give it a try. With about 30k to go, we start at the hilly part of this race towards the end. Four hills and then the final uphill sprint as well. Royzer setting a bit of a tempo, making sure our team stays at the front. We're now on the second last hill. Once again, Royzer pacing. Some moves on the left. I think Makai and Digard are going to try and pace a bit. I don't really want that. So let's try and make sure I up it towards 90-92 and keep up the tempo. Then stroll it on to the... Uh, next hill which is already near the line so if i just hammer that last fourth cat climb then we should be good with our squad five kilometers left to ride Major is now ready to take over from vash onto the final hill let's move it up to 95 vash don't block our teammates don't block our teammates get out of the way get out of the way perfect and we're gonna try and launch ourselves over this one 
four riders in our wheel and let's start diving down right now this is gonna be good this is gonna be really good last 1.5 kilometers sprint everybody kopecky in second wheel there let's try and launch with kopecky past everybody come on kopecky kopecky tries to come around volring is gonna take it that's good for me volring is fine for me there we go We've got a one, two, three in the stage as well, I think. Our positioning into the final stretch was perfect. And as you can see, it led to a beautiful result for the squad. Probably going to be Kopecky in yellow still. Exactly. But Volring is now in second. We've got Moman Pasio only six seconds behind Volring. So not sure who to go for as leader yet. Honestly, it's been a while since I've gotten a one, two, three on extreme difficulty. So kind of happy with that one. On to the final and perhaps most intriguing stage of the episode, the gravel stage four gravel sections, the third one being quite long. The annoying aspect is that Von Vleut and Longo Borghini, the riders that we are up against when it comes to GC, are also the favorites for this stage. But hey, we'll give it a try. I saw an opportunity, so I decided to go into the breakaway with Catablanca Vash. Can I get someone else in the breakaway? That would be ideal. Okay, the answer to that was no. <laughs> anyway, I'm happy with Vaj in the breakaway. We've got six riders up here, of which I am definitely the strongest. On to the first gravel section, Chemin de Sel. We've got a KOM here, so I do think the tempo is going to go up. So let's move it up to 85 ourselves to make sure they don't surprise us. Honestly, we got over that quite easily. By the way, I'm going to keep saying KOM by accident all the time. I know it's not exactly applicable to women's cycling. My bad. We got ourselves over the first two gravel sections of the day. We've got the third one now incoming. Chemin du Plateau de Bleu. We're on it right now. Four side uphill and 5.4 kilometers. So it is definitely the hardest. And we got over that as well. A gap of 5 minutes 30 on the peloton now who's still on it, but not pacing at all. Okay, all the gravel sections are done for. Vaj got over it. We've got four people with us. 12k to go attack by someone. Let's try and follow people right here. The Bram is the one that is trying to get away. Let's try to get away with the rest then on this hill and make sure we can stick with them because we're the fastest in the group. Four minutes 30 on the peloton. The stage win seems to be for this breakaway. I'm going to put myself on the wheel of Beismann in these final six kilometers in the hopes that that helps me right here. Yes, it does because she's the one attacking. Vash in the wheel. We are the best sprinter in the group, so we can play it defensively. In the peloton, I'm doing absolutely nothing today. Three kilometers left to ride. We are in second wheel, prepping ourselves for the sprint. Baismon in first. We've got third wheel. Bram. Can Vash take home a stage in the Tour de France Femme? Let's start sprinting. Right now, there we go. Vash tries to come around. Come on, Catablanca. Come on. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Yes, yes, yes. No. We bottled it. We bottled it. I bloody bottled it. <laughs> All this preparation. And we get second. That's so disappointing. Now that's what we call utter disappointment. Nina Baisman of Human Powered Health beats Catablanca Vash on the gravel stage. Oh my god. 6.14 on the peloton. Wait a second. Oh my god. Let's take a look at the next screen. Catablanca Vash is in the yellow jersey of the Tour de France Femme after our first episode. 109 on Pirone. The first proper competitor in fourth, Kopecky, on 425. We nearly won every stage this episode, but we bottled it in the sprint on stage four. In the next episode, we will be fighting with our GC leaders, Moma Pasio, and then we've got Demi Voring also sitting nicely in fifth position already. But we know, Von Vleuten, she's coming. Anyway, the last four stages will be for the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.